Uh, Danny, do you want to get us started here? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. There we go. Um, so, yeah, let's start with a little bit of background about Eagle Point Software. We've been in business for over 40 years now, and in 2006, we introduced Pinnacle Series. Pinnacle Series is our solution, our e-learning platform, which goes well far beyond uh, tr just the training inside of it. We're one of the founding members of the Autodesk Developer Network, and today we have well over 600,000 users in the Eagle Point um, platform. But what I want to draw your attention to today specifically is that we are still a company of architects, engineers, construction, and manufacturing professionals. Our largest team here at Eagle Point is our customer success team, followed closely by our development team. And I'm highlighting that because we create all of our content here in-house um, at Eagle Point, or the majority of it, and we also own our solution. So we're constantly adding new features and updates to the platform to provide a better experience for our users. And lastly, of course, our fabulous customer success team um, helps make sure that our customers get the most benefit out of our platform. With that, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Dolly. All right. Thank you very much, Danny. Now, before I jump into the demonstration of Pinnacle Series, uh, we really just want to give you an understanding of why we created the Pinnacle Series. And this is going to kind of help us guide us through that demonstration. So we have noticed that there's these three common challenges that many organizations face. I have these laid out here on the slide. I'm going to spend just a few minutes explaining these challenges so then we can understand how Pinnacle Series can help. And then we'll jump into the platform for that demonstration. So the first challenge, this concept of continuous learning covers a few different challenge areas. You know, whether it's onboarding new employees, bringing them up to speed, you need to be able to provide the new users the training they need to do their day-to-day -day work. Or maybe for your existing employees, you know, you want to provide training as an opportunity for those users to take their skills to the next level, maybe learn a new technology. Also, with the technologies that are being used, you know, new versions versions are always being released and users just really need a way to maintain their knowledge level. Well, Pinnacle Series comes loaded with training courses on a variety of technologies. The platform provides on-demand training for users when they need it, uh, but also when they have the time to do it. The next challenge is uh, knowledge capturing and sharing. So for many organizations, it can be a challenge to capture knowledge or think of it as your company standards, your processes, your best practices, and then be able to share that information uh, to all of your users throughout your organization. Having all this knowledge, uh, you know, not only documented, but also consistently updated and easily accessible can be a challenge. Uh, with Pinnacle Series, you have the ability to add as much custom content into the platform as needed. You will have unlimited cloud storage uh, to upload as many videos, documents. Any of the materials you add are then searchable on the platform, and any of the materials can also be incorporated into the learning that's being assigned out to your users, so that way you can be sure they're learning about your process or your best practices. So having all this information or knowledge in one place makes it easier for employees to find what they need and stay productive, which brings us to that last challenge of increasing productivity. If we look at the way that our users are using Pinnacle Series today, about half are logging in for the e-learning type of content. Uh, the other half of users might be working on a project and logging into Pinnacle Series to find an answer to their question or get some help if they get stuck. You know, people need to be able to, you know, get the answers to the questions quickly in order to stay productive. So Pinnacle Series really starts with the learning content, but then also becomes a central location to share all of your tips and tricks, you know, company standards, best practices, all in one location. Um, it makes it easily accessible as well. All right, once again, that's a little bit of an introduction as to why we created the Pinnacle series here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the platform here, but just want to mention as I'm going through this, please feel free to put any questions you have into the chat. Um, I'm sure Danny and Misty can do uh, some help me out and monitor that chat for a little bit while I'm going through this. All right. 
So I am here on the Pinnacle Series homepage. A few things off the top, Pinnacle Series is a browser-based solution, so making it very easy for users to access the platform, you know, regardless of where they are working. As far as the overall look and feel of the platform, um, we allow each of our clients to customize their tenant of Pinnacle Series. So right now we're logged into a tenant that we actually have created here for Gray Tech. Um, so we're obviously seeing Gray Tech colors, logos, but if you purchase Pinnacle Series, you have the ability to add your own logo, update the colors, even really customize the layout of the uh, platform here as well. All right, now when a user logs in, what the user sees on their homepage will be personalized to that specific user. So depending on what courses they are a part of, we'll drive what they see here. In the My Work Group section, a user will see any of the work groups that they are a part of. Another setting that I will mention here, every user will have a uh, user profile section in the upper right-hand corner. From here, the user can select the language that is needed. So Pinnacle Series is available in just over 90 different languages. So the individual user can select their language, apply, and it will update any of the written word on the platform uh, for the user here. But back on the home page, kind of want to start off with just like a general overview of the home page. So let's say a user is logging in to access some content to get some guidance, all right? They can do a search up top. Otherwise, they can browse for information over here on the left in this area that we call asset libraries. Now, this is where all the content on the platform is organized. There are two separate sections of this asset library area. So I'm actually going to start with this Adobe and going on down. These are what we call the public preloaded libraries that are available with a Pinnacle Series subscription. So meaning our team here at Eagle Point Software, some of our partners such as Gray Tech are maintaining the content within these libraries as part of the subscription. So you can see we have a long list of different technologies. Um, some of these libraries can be expanded. So Autodesk, as an example, is really the largest of our libraries. Kind of how Danny mentioned, that's really where we got our start as, as a company here it was with the Autodesk desk uh, partnership, but you can see we have everything from AutoCAD, BIM products, Civil 3D, Fusion 360, Inventor, Revit, and much, much more here. Uh, but we do have content outside of Autodesk, so you'll see things such as Adobe, Bentley, Bluebeam, um, McNeil products, Microsoft, Procore, and we have some more like soft skills types of content as well. So you'll see things such as business and management, health and safety, uh, and project management type of content as well. So a long really list of content to really get you started. If I jump into one of these libraries as an example, so let's say I'm using Civil 3D, so I'm gonna navigate to the Civil 3D library. Across the top, I'll see the version years. So as updates are made to the technology, the content within Pinnacle Series will also be updated. But from this Civil 3D landing page, I just want to introduce the four types of assets is what we call them, so or types of materials, resources that make up these libraries here on the left-hand side. So these are the, the types of materials that come loaded in the platform. So first we have learning paths, and this is exactly what you think of when you hear e-learning platforms. These are the on-demand courses that are going to guide the user you know, through a structured curriculum to learn a new skill, to fill a knowledge gap. You know, there's different levels of learning, um, kind of depending on which uh, technology uh, library you are in there. Uh, then we have workflows. Workflows are a visual guide of a process, a best practice. It's going to walk the user step by step through that process. We'll jump into examples of each of these in just a moment. Just want to introduce here for the moment. Documents. You can think of these as quick, helpful information, maybe some tips and tricks or frequently asked questions. And then we have a large library of videos. So let's say, or I guess I should say, kind of in contrast to a learning path that could be 30 minutes to an hour long, all of our videos are about five minutes or less. So let's say that situation where you know, a user's working on a project, they have a question, we don't want them to have to sit through an hour long course to find what they need. You know, instead they can check out the library of short videos. All right, once again, those are the four types of assets that make up these libraries here on the left hand side. Um, the top section of the asset library here is the custom 
content library for your organization. Um, so right now, like I said, we are logged into a tenant for Graytech, so we are seeing the Graytech customization that they have done here. Uh, but with Pinnacle Series, I've mentioned that knowledge capturing and sharing uh, challenge. With Pinnacle Series, you can upload as much content as you would like into the platform, whether that is videos, documents, you know, whether that is PDFs, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, unlimited storage. Uh, you can name these folders whatever you wish based on the types of materials that you do decide to add. Um, so obviously we're looking at great Great text library here. So this is the folders that they have uh, identified. Uh, but we have a lot of clients who will use Pinnacle Series as a way to create a structured onboarding experience for their users. So think of all those day one, week one materials that uh, new users need to go through. Those can all be added to Pinnacle Series, you know, uploaded or I guess organized into a learning path and assigned to every new user uh, that begins with the organization. So really our goal is to help you to create this central hub of information that users are coming to, whether it's for out-of-the-box learning, some custom materials, and now we'll talk about some additional learning opportunities here as well. All right, so let's talk about those those common challenges again. I, I wanna show you the different areas of Pinnacle Series that can help with each. So the first challenge I introduced to you was that challenge of continuous learning and the challenge of providing learning for uh, new users who are going through onboarding or existing users who really maybe wanna upskill you know, as an opportunity. There's a few different ways that users can get into the learning. Kind of like I've already discussed, they could browse based on the technology they are using and they can self-enroll. Otherwise, a manager or an admin can assign users into learning. Anytime that enrollment takes place, the user will find the course on their My Courses section of their homepage, uh, kind of until they complete all the materials that make up that, that course. So it kind of stays on their homepage, on their list, until they complete all the materials. Um, so I am the user logged in. I have a few uh, courses that I'm working through right now. If I jump into this uh, ACC one here, I just want to show you how our learning is structured. So on the left-hand side, we have the training list or curriculum that has been put together for this course. Uh, courses can be made up of videos, documents, workflows. Some might have an exercise or a quiz included at the end, but essentially the platform's gonna guide the user through the list. Let's say um, this course is 90% of how you'd want your users to work through the materials. With Pinnacle Series, um, and another advantage is that we allow our clients to customize any of our out-of-the-box materials that we provide. So I said, you know, this course is maybe 90% of what we would need our users to go through. You have the ability to copy down this curriculum, so essentially copy down this list, create a duplicate of it, and at that point you could remove anything that's not necessary. So maybe it's a feature you don't use in the technology, or it's not exactly how you do things. It can easily just be removed. But you can also add any of those custom videos, custom documents, custom quizzes into this line up here as well. All right, so a really great opportunity to use our content as a starting point and kind of just fill in some of those custom pieces into the learning that's being assigned out to your users. Or let's say you have a series of you know, five, six videos, a document, and create a custom quiz. You can also have your own standalone learning path and can be assigned out the same way any of our out-of-the-box learning can be assigned out here as well. All right, so that's a little bit about out of the box learning and customizing some learning. Now with Pinnacle Series, uh, we have a way that we can provide personalized learning. So to show you this, I'm actually gonna jump into my demo tenant. Um, I'm an actual user in this tenant, so it's a little bit easier for me to, to explain how this works. But we have a tool built into Pinnacle Series. It is called Knowledge Smart, and it is our assessment tool. With the results of the assessment, we can provide targeted learning to each individual user. All right, so to kind of show you what this looks like, I have a trophy icon in my toolbar. That is our uh, assessment icon. You can see I have an alert telling me I've been assigned some assessments. I can go ahead and uh, select the assessment that I wanna work on. It's gonna take me to the welcome page. 
uh, where I can get some information before I begin. There are also usually some download files. So Knowledge Smart questions can be both knowledge-based, but also task-based. So asking the user to open a project file, work through some steps before they can answer the question. Once I have everything that I need, I can go ahead and begin my assessment. Users simply work through the question navigator. So one question at a time, questions can be true, false, multiple choice, fill in the blank uh, type questions here. Once I've answered all my questions, I can go ahead and submit my assessment. And then back on my Pinnacle Series homepage, I will receive that personalized learning, meaning I will only be enrolled in topics that are needed. I will not have to spend time retraining on the topics that I shown that I understood you know, through the course of the assessment. So if I go into this learning path here, it's going to look very similar to the out of the box learning path that I was just showing you, right? The ACC one out of the box. Uh, but some of the differences. So up top, and I apologize, this might be kind of small for you, you can see that I was only enrolled in 12 out of the 16 courses. Um, our fundamentals is, you know, pretty long, but by assessing myself up front, I was actually able to test out of those four initial courses and probably save myself several hours of training. Um, I can also see the individual items that I'm skipping over kind of in those those training lists here. They're kind of grayed out because essentially I've answered those questions correctly. I don't need to review those videos. So Knowledge Smart is a great resource for you to efficiently provide training to your users based on their individual needs, uh, but also a great way to identify, you know, what are the skills gaps across our organization or just across a certain team with all this assessment data, you can identify where there might be opportunities for larger training initiatives within your organization. Also, another, like a really common use of Knowledge Smart is that you can send assessments to people that you are interviewing for positions within your organization. Uh, they don't get access to your Pinnacle Series platform or anything like that. They get sent kind of an external URL link, uh, but they can complete the assessment as part of the interview process. If you decide to move forward with them, they can be converted to an employee in the system. The results will kind of stay to that user account, and now you can provide that personalized learning as part of their onboarding process with your organization. All right, so that is Knowledge Smart. So I just provided several different ways that we can really get users into learning. Uh, but to go along with that, we need to be able to report on who's doing what on the platform. Um, so I went ahead and pulled some sample reports for use just so you can get an idea on the types of things that we can report on. So starting in the learning area, uh, we can report on learning path progress, you know, the amount of time users are taking on uh, the learning, you know, what courses were completed, you know, who are our top learners. This is simply just a dashboard view. If we wanted to dive deeper, each of these dashboards has a report details link that will take us deeper into the data so we can get more details on you know, what courses were completed in the last 90 days by how many users, also that, that average uh, learning time here as well. But going even further uh, to the raw data, I guess, of the dashboard, we can get to the details of individual users, what courses they were enrolled into, date of completion, how much of the content they reviewed, uh, and if there was a quiz included, what was the quiz score that they did receive. From here, we can definitely filter down by groups or individual users, and we also can export uh, easily into Excel if you wanted to apply several filters or take this into Power BI. Um, and I will mention, we do have an open API for the platform, so if you had another sort of system that may need some of this learning data, um, that would be an opportunity to integrate as well. Same sort of usage, uh, excuse me, same sort of reporting being done on just usage of the platform. So, you know, how many users are logging in, how often, what resources are they using? So outside of learning, what videos, documents, workflows are customers or uh, you know, your users utilizing. This just gives you an idea of why are people coming to Pinnacle Series? What are they looking for? You can see the searches uh, that are being done. Do we have items that we need to promote? Um, or is there an opportunity to maybe add some additional resources into the platform? Getting back to the assessment piece of it, um, reporting on the assessment is, you know, a really powerful part of that tool. Because like I said, with all this assessment data, you can really 
learn more about your users and identify those skills gaps across your team. So there is uh, some report templates that can be used. Um, this one's simply keeping track of all the users and their scores so we can identify, you know, who are those top users versus users that would maybe benefit from additional training uh, resources here. It's going to keep track of the average uh, time to take that assessment by the average score. Same sort of thing, identifying those top users versus those uh, users that could benefit from some additional training. Assessments will keep track of training tags. So every assessment question has training tags associated with it. So these reports are going to help you understand which training tags are showing up most often among your users. So essentially, what users are answering incorrectly most often. So in this example, it's room. So we understand that that would be a skills gap through this uh, group of users here. All right. That is the reporting uh, part of the platform here. Kind of getting back to the home screen here, one area I do want to highlight here, it's just kind of scroll down here a little bit. We have a live event calendar built into the platform. Uh, we really wanted a way to provide a blended learning approach with Pinnacle Series. And by blended, I mean, you know, we have hundreds of on-demand courses that users can complete um, you know, on their own time as the time, you know, when they have time to do so. But this live event calendar allows you to incorporate some instructor led training to go alongside the e learning content. So, with your Pinnacle Series platform, you can organize, schedule training sessions, you know, whether they call them webinars, brown bags, lunch, uh, lunch sort of uh, training sessions. These events can be organized and scheduled and available through Pinnacle Series on the calendar. So users would see the events for your organization only on their calendar. They can register for anything that they are interested in, or they can also be kind of invited to attend as well. Our team here at Eagle Point Software puts on a weekly webinar series. Um, so these are included in the subscription, so users can register for anything that they are interested in. The focus of these sessions do change week from week because we obviously have a large customer base that spans different industries. Um, so we our technology focus will change from week to week. Everything is recorded and uploaded back into the platform. And so if you can't attend live, you can definitely find the recording uh, in the uh, event calendar here. All right, and just I guess I should mention, so when you're organizing and scheduling these events, this is simply the means to organize. The event itself is still happening on Teams or Zoom or a live meeting room. This is simply the way to, you know, the interface to kind of organize and schedule these events. When users select register, it will send them that ICS file to save to their uh, calendar there. Now to switch gears just a little bit, I talked a lot about learning, uh, but that's really just one side of Pinnacle Series. Uh, we also want to promote this as a productivity tool. So let's say your users are through onboarding, uh, through training, focusing in on project work. They can use Pinnacle Series to find the answers to their question or get some help if they get stuck. There's a few different ways that they can get to those materials, kind of like we've already mentioned. They can browse based on the technology that they are using, uh, but they can also do a search. One Pinnacle Series does the search, it's going to look through our out-of-the-box materials, but also anything that your organization has uploaded to the platform here as well. Uh, we have some filter options on the left-hand side, so if I wanted to narrow down to a certain technology or just a certain version here, I can easily do so uh, with the filter. Now from this search results list, I do want to give you a closer look at those remaining asset types. So outside of learning the additional uh, materials that you you know come loaded in Pinnacle series but they're also the types of materials that you could incorporate or customize on the platform as well so first we have documents and documents are quick helpful information tips and tricks frequently asked questions this one is a cheat sheet walking the user through some steps within Revit all right so we have some helpful links and screenshots to help the user you know with uh, this cheat sheet. Every piece of content will have these icons up top, one of being a share icon. So if I need to quickly copy a link, share via email, share with some other users in Pinnacle Series, I can easily do so. Uh, the next asset type is a video. 
all of our videos are meant to be the quick how-to type videos, so about five minutes or less. Uh, we have some video navigation tools, so you can speed up, slow down, you can take it to full screen here. All right. And the last asset type is the, uh, let's see here, is a workflow. A workflow is a visual guide of a process, a best practice. It's going to walk the user step by step through that process. So on the left hand side, I have the outline or the tree view of this process. So this is an example of setting up a new project, uh, project in Revit. In the middle here, I have this interactive diagram view. I can zoom in, I can follow along step by step, but when I click on the steps in the left hand side, or on the on the right hand side, excuse me, is where the details were, will appear. So these are essentially the, the information I need to complete this step in the process. Within the details, there are some helpful links. Uh, one just being a reference video, so if I need a quick reminder on how to load a material into a project, I can review that video without losing my spot in the workflow that I'm following along to. Uh, we also have tool command links that will take users right to where they need to be. Uh, in this case, I do have Revit open on my machine. It's kind of hard to show you on a single monitor that I'm sharing, but if I select the materials link here, it will take me into Revit and open that material browser window for me. So it's a very helpful tool to have. Imagine users you know, having their project open on one screen, following along to a workflow on the other, really ensuring that they are following the correct process the first time they work on something and hopefully eliminate any need for rework down the road. In the same way that we spoke about learning and being able to copy down and customize, the same is true for any of our out-of-the-box workflows. You can copy it down, make the modifications needed so that it follows you know, your, your process for setting up a new project file. Um, so that way you can be sure that users are following you know, your best practice there. Kind of in reverse, while I have Revit open here, I want to highlight a tool we have uh, you know, available within uh, some of the Autodesk technologies, so Revit, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, uh, Plant 3D, Inventor. It is this related learning topics tool. This will show content related to the command that I am utilizing, or as you can see, I'm selecting different things within Revit, and it's showcasing that content. So if I'm working on a project, I have a question, I can see there's a five minute video on placing walls. This link will take me directly into Pinnacle Series to review that video. I don't have to go searching for it. Um, so like I said, really helpful to keep the materials in front of the users. If you have content that you want users to be utilizing, so let's say it's a, a checklist, a document, a workflow, you know, while they're working on a project, those items can be tagged to the appropriate commands and can be shown here in this uh, utility here as well. All right. Just a few more areas here, and we will uh, get this opened up for some questions. So this My Work Groups is a way to pull together the right group of content for the right group of users. So when a user logs in, they will only see the work groups that they are a part of, so seeing what's relevant to them. Work groups could be created for you know, teams, uh, disciplines, uh, project teams, maybe a group of new users going through onboarding. They can be long-term groups or they can be short-term groups, you know, kind of however you need to organize some content. But when I click into a work group, it's going to open up to the asset tab where I can see the items that have been pulled together for this group of users. All right, so this is what's relevant to me, depending on maybe the project that I'm working on. There is a discussion tab for members of the group. So they can leave comments, feedback for, for those members. On the Members tab, we can add or remove users. Uh, there's different levels of permissions based on who needs to add content, assign learning, that sort of uh, material. But we also have an option to invite external users. So with the work group, let's say this was a work group created for a project. Um, as I kind of already used as an example, and you have a contractor, a subconsultant, you know, also working on that project team. They could be invited to be a member of this work group, and they will have access to anything that you add to the asset tab. 
uh, but not all of Pinnacle series. So it's kind of a way to lock down their visibility uh, to what they need for the purposes of the project that they're working on. Uh, and you can even set their expiration date here. So when you add them, you could expire them after you know three months, six months, whatever it might be, um, depending on the length of that project. All right. little bit about uh, the setup of the platform. And once again, I'm gonna jump into my demo tenant because I just have some examples of this already laid out here for you. Because um, that's always an important question. People wanna know, you know what this will take to implement. Um, well, obviously there was some customization opportunities, but it is browser based. So there's not, you know, installing and stuff like that that needs to happen. Uh, but we do need to get users into the platform, which we can do a few different ways. We can add manually, we can import from a spreadsheet. We can also sync with an Active Directory, if that's anything that's maintained on your end, um, to kind of automate the user list as users come and go from your organization. They can be added or removed based on that Active Directory sync. Once we have users in the platform, we'll want to organize into groups, and groups will help us keep users organized, but also help drive their permissions on the platform, as far as you know, who can uh, add content or who can view reporting uh, versus who's just a standard user that needs to consume some content. And then we also have some options for a single sign-on as well. All right. I'm going to go ahead and jump back into PowerPoint here because we have a little bit um, about discussing kind of the subscription model of Pinnacle Series, and then we will uh, be answering questions. Danny, do you want to jump back in? Absolutely. Thanks so much, Dolly. Fantastic presentation. Could you just pop that slide back up for me? Sorry about that. That's okay. Thanks so much. Yes, so Pinnacle Series subscription includes access to all of the courses, and we'll go over what that entails, documents, workflows, videos, our live events, which is a, a great add, um, another thing that you can add to your professional development, the translations um, in over 90 languages. That's right out of the box. A user can pick what language they want to see um, Pinnacle series in. Um, we provide unlimited storage as part of the platform. So for your custom content, your videos, you can upload those right into the platform. Um, you get all of the reporting. Um, in addition to the upload of content, you can customize our, our content, add your own, create, create your own learning paths, create your own assessments, etc. cetera. Um, and then of course we have an open API. Um, with our enterprise accounts, we actually um, include a customer success manager like Dolly to help you get implemented and um, deployed across your users and meet your particular goals. As far as what comes out of the box with Pinnacle Series for our libraries, um, and I, I do want to point out that we do have just so much more than just the Autodesk library um, with Pinnacle Series. Uh, you see everything that's on the left-hand side of the screen, um, so Bluebeam, Esri, um, Rhino, um, Grasshopper, Salibri, um, SketchUp, and a few that aren't even listed there as well. Um, what's available as add-on for a small fee is our Adobe library, our Microsoft library, our management skills, and health and safety. I do also want to point out um, we do have uh, libraries available for both SolidWorks as well as for Bentley. Those are also add-in libraries, um, but certainly available, and um, I'm sure lots of you are using those products as well as your Autodesk. So we do want to let you know that um, you can reach out to your Gray Tech USA account manager if you'd like to um, set up a, a demonstration um, of Pinnacle Series tailored to your organization um, or a request a trial depending on what type of organization you are. Um, and then we'd like to open it up to questions today. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Danny and Dolly. Um, so I wonder, to get the conversation started, um, is there some common questions that are asked um, when we look at this type of software? 
Yeah, I think one that I get a lot um, is about, and I kind of just alluded to it in my final thing talking about the setup, but people want to know how long this is going to take to implement. Um, there's a lot of customization opportunities. Some people get a little overwhelmed. And I'll just say that we have a lot of clients, and I would say a majority of clients, that just start with strictly out of the box. You can have users loaded in here and can go in a matter of a few days. And then gradually over time, you can begin to add those custom materials. You can customize some learning. You can customize some assessments as you get familiar with you know what you have available to you so don't think that you know you have to do all this work in order to get it going we hope that clients will use our content as a starting point uh, and then like I said gradually customize over time fantastic thank you so much and I did put on the screen for you guys if you're interested in a free demo you can literally click right there on the screen it'll take you directly to our website there so you can fill out a form and we'll we'll reach out to you as well yeah, All and right. some, a question I get frequently is, who are some of your customers? And, you know, as I mentioned, we have over 600,000 users in the platform, but from a customer perspective, it ranges all the way from a few users all the way up to thousands. So just to throw out a few names I'm sure most of you have heard of, Burns & McDonald, WSP, um, CDM Smith, uh, just to name a few, Hitachi Energy. Um, so broad range of clients, both small and large.